Welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and today's lesson is on the sixth day in uh, post package bees installation inspection. So I did an inspection three days after I did the uh, package bees installation and I did not see the queen being released so I am now doing the sixth day inspection. Uh, if you saw the queen was released on day three then you did not have to do this inspection but in this case my case the queen had not been released yet so I'm now inspecting the hive uh, so I'm gonna flip the phone around I'm gonna show you that the bees are acting perfectly normal okay so I've now flipped the camera around and you can see that uh, this particular setup because I had a pollen patty installed and in the manufacturer of this particular deep hive body um, the um, top wasn't very deep um, to where the frame rest was so I had to add an emery shim so that's why you see a lot of bees coming out of the hole toward the top uh, on one of my other hive bodies that I actually made myself I, I created deeper I do not need an emery shim on it and if I get to that in this video you'll see that uh, that one does not have an emery shim this one does uh, this emery shim is to allow space for the bees to get access to the pollen patty again what you're seeing here our bees doing ellipticals uh, for orientation flights. They're also coming in from foraging for nectar and pollen in the area. And they're coming in the entrance reducer hole. And they're also coming in that emery shim hole. Um, so now I will uh, turn the camera off and then suit up for today's inspection. I'm wearing a sweatband because it's pretty hot today. Uh, as goofy as it looks. Um, but again, it keeps sweat out of my eyes. And because I'm an old guy... I wear one and a half power reading glasses and I will also use a flashlight to look for the eggs. Um, so I'll suit up and open up and I'll show you what I'm seeing. Okay, I took the hive top off and the Miller hive top feeder off. And I first thing I like to do as I'm taking things apart, I didn't show this piece, but I'll show you. You can see down in the Miller feeder that the syrup is gone. If I were to take off the lid, you would see it that all the syrup is again gone so I will take a mental note to fill that when I'm done I'm looking inside the hive and you can see that the bees are calm they are look uh, feeding on the pollen patty and then I'll try to shine a light down inside and see if I can see down inside let me blow on the bees you can see in there shine the light on you can actually see that they've already eaten through the hole but I'll take that queen cage out and I should see the queen release that's a good sign so I'll take the emery shum off for temporary so I can get access to the um, frames out and then we'll take a look at everything all right I'm gonna shut it off for a second while I take that queen cage I'm gonna take first I'm gonna take the outer frame out gently um, and then I am going to spread that bars apart, those frames apart, uh, that has a queen cage, and I'm going to take out the queen cage. If she hasn't been released, then I'll release her, um, if the bees have, um, have accepted her. In this case, I can almost tell she's released already. So, let me put it on pause, and we'll go from there. Okay, um, I've got the queen cage out. And you can see a little bit of the candy plug in there, but if you look carefully, you can actually see the bees have chewed enough for the queen to get out. I no longer see the queen in there. I do see three dead attendants. That could be either they were old um, or more than likely they got killed by the other bees. Um, so I will, um, now that I've seen that, I'll go looking through the frames and see if I see eggs yet. I probably won't see eggs this early on, but uh, I think that uh, they've accepted this queen. Uh, the tail will be in a few days when I see a few eggs. Um, so let me start taking the frames out and taking a look at it. I probably will not show that on camera since I'm holding the camera by hand today. Okay, if you look closely, right under the camera, you can see the queen is being attended to right in the center of the camera. Uh, I'm going to blow on it, but you can see her shiny, abdomen, or her shiny thorax. She's right on the bottom of the frame, so they have accepted her. Uh, you can see her queen retinue, um, her queen attendants around there. Again, I'll blow on her. 
Again, she's right over the cage, over the top of the box, so if she falls anywhere while I'm showing you this, uh, she's going to fall in the box, so it's okay. So I'm going to blow on just to kind of give you a better view of her. And you can see her moving around a little bit. See her now? But now that you've seen it, I'm going to stop the I'm going to stop the video and put her back in so she's safely in the box. Okay, I have the box uh, reconfigured and kind of a lesson within a lesson. If you notice on my videos, I've always got a line across one end of all the frames. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to put the frames back in the order uh, that I took them out of. Um, so sometimes I'll have the, the lines across the back of the um, box. Sometimes I'll have it across the front. It doesn't matter as long as they're all on one end of the box or the other. Again, as I pull out frames, I remember where they are in the position number, you know, left to right. Uh, but then I'll also make sure I have the end that has the line on it facing the same direction. And what that does, that keeps the brood aligned in the order that uh, when the queen goes out and, and lays eggs and they create brood, um, it allows me to put them back in the order that they found it. It's less stressful on the workers. Um, also, I've got, if you see in the video here, I had some comb that was being drawn improperly um, on one of the frames. So I just took my hive tool and scraped it off and made them redo it. Um, so again, you can save this and use it in candles or if you make your own foundation, you can also use that. That's perfectly fine. So again, this queen is now safe. You saw it. She's very calm. She was uh, uh, on that frame where I showed you. So now it's all I want to do because I've got a pollen patty and because this manufacturer of this equipment, you can see it that the uh, frames are almost at the top of the box. They make their frame rest very deep. When I make my own equipment, I make three quarter inch rabbits all the way around the um, three sides of the end. So that way my frames sit a little deeper um, in the box. Um, in this case, because I've got a pollen patty, I have to add this emery shim to give the bees space. And some beekeepers will like to equally space the um, frames in an eight frame box you see it, you'll see that there's a lot more space in an eight frame box um, I personally like to my technique is just to move it off to all to one side realize that I'm going to get burr comb on this side that has the bigger gap not a big deal to me because um, that usually is a honey on the outside so I'll usually just lift that frame straight up and then scrape off the burr comb uh, so yeah I'm going to put this um, Miller High Top feeder back on and I'm going to fill it full of sugar syrup in this case because it's warm weather now it's one to one uh, sugar to hot water hot tap water um, by weight so one gallon of water equals two bags of two four pound bags of, of sugar and then I'll add uh, one teaspoon of honeybee healthy per quart of water um, to give it to extend the life of the sugar uh, and also give them some essential oils. So I'll move on to the next hive and that will be a shorter piece of this video just to show you the condition of that queen in the second hive. Okay, so I just filled this uh, Miller Hive Top Feeder with the uh, two and a half gallon bucket, food grade bucket that I have and I just took the, I poured it through the screen but I wanted to show you what one gallon of water and eight pounds of sugar uh, how much that fills up basically it almost fills up this two and a half gallon bucket gives me a, about an inch or two down from the half uh, two and a half gallon bucket top and then you can see where it almost fills up entirely uh, this eight frame Miller feeder um, so it's a good uh, basically one bucket per Miller high top feeder on an eight frame and that's about the perfect size you can see it's barely uh, it's about a quarter of an inch you can't really see through that screen but it's basically about a quarter inch down from the top of that ladder that the bees crawl up in from that slot um, so again just gives you a kind of lesson within a lesson to show you how much of a two and a half gallon bucket of water with again one gallon of water and eight pounds of sugar that's how much that gives you in sugar syrup all right on to the next hive all right I mixed up another uh, bucket of sugar syrup and while I was at it, I decided to go ahead and show you what um, the fluid level in a two and a half gallon food grade bucket is uh, with one gallon of wa hot tap water and 
eight pounds of white granulated sugar. You can see uh, the fluid is about two, two and a half inches below the surface, which is perfect for carrying it out in the apiary so it doesn't spill. Um, again, just a small piece. And now I'll open up this other hive um, and show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna spin around. You can see the other hive I'm about to inspect. And again, this one you can see um, that the bees are flying perfectly calm. I've got one girl in front of my camera here. Keeps buzzing me. Um, but in this one, because I made this high body myself, I make it a little the high body just a little bit deeper uh, so I can get that three quarter inch rabbit on the sides and the top um, where my side pieces come in and where the rabbit, uh, where the frames sit. So that's why this one does not have an emery shim. Um, so again, you see the girls are calm. Um, I'm actually going to go around behind it to open up. You never want to be in front of the hive uh, unless you have to, so you're not in the girl's flight path. So I'm going to go behind it and open it up, and we'll see what it looks like. This is uh, the hive, uh, and if you watch the day three check, this is the one where the queen cage had fallen all the way to the bottom um, for whatever reason. So let's open it up and see what we got. All right, so I took the hive top off and I'm looking in uh, inside the um, Miller feeder. I forgot to put a ventilated inner cover over it. Again, the whole purpose of putting a ventilated inner cover on top of this is to keep the bees from getting inside this um, syrup chamber um, from flying up from the hive and coming in there and drowning once I open everything up. And in this case, you can see that there's just a little bit of syrup left in this. And again, because this is a brand new colony, I'm going to feed them all the sugar syrup that they want to take. So it's just a mental note from here to um, have the syrup ready. In this case, I knew I was going to need it, so I had it ready to go start off with. So I'm going to put it on pause and then uh, take this off and we'll go from there. All right. I took this. It's a good uh, idea to always look underneath the um, feeder, feeder to see what you see. Uh, you're mainly looking for the queen. In this case, you can see that little black bug running away. That is a small hive beetle, which tells me I now need to add small hive beetles. Because small hive beetles love, you see the bees are trying to chase it because they can't bite through the exoskeleton of that small hive beetle. So they're trying to chase it around. So that tells me I need to add some beetle traps. So I'm going to smash this small hive beetle uh, and then add some traps when I'm done. Okay, this is exactly why you want to remove any improperly drawn comb. If you look carefully down in there, one, you can see that the queen has already been released. Uh, when I look in the queen cage, you can see that she's been released. I'll try to put the light directly in there, um, but I'll, I'll confirm it here in a second. But if you look further to the uh, further up from that, you can see that they've made comb and they've drawn it perpendicular to the frame which is wrong uh, so you can see that they've tried to bind two frames together um, so that's not all that uncommon but when you do and you see that you've got to take it out and force them to draw the comb correctly uh, so you can see it's actually again I'll try to get the light in there a little bit better but again you can see it's it's spread between two frames and it's just a mess um, this is also why if you uh, run starter strips instead of full sheets of foundation. You never want to put two uh, foundation strip frames right next to each other because they'll do just this. So I, years ago, I did that. I made that mistake, and I had eight frames of nothing but starter strips in there, and I had uh, all my frames connected by cross uh, comb um, or brace comb, as they call it. Uh, where they'd drawn it perpendicular and they'd attached all the frames together. Um, so anyhow. I'll pull that queen cage out just to confirm it, and then I'll remove that comb that's drawn incorrectly. Okay, I pulled that frame out, and I kept it over top of the box as much as I can, just to show you what the improperly drawn comb looks like. And um, again, a reason to keep that over the frame as much as, over the, the frame over the box as much as you can, as I actually see the queen uh, underneath that. When I looked underneath one of those improperly drawn comb. Uh, pieces there in the center. I actually saw the queen moving around. So when I remove that, I'm gonna have to be very careful not to get the queen rolled up in that wax whenever I remove this comb. So um, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to see that portion in the video because um, I've again uh, I'm just brought my camera out today instead of my tripod. Um, so I'm gonna carefully remove that comb and make sure the queen is still in there so I'll show you the queen once I'm done hopefully
Okay, I've got this queen. I'm following her. If you follow her, she's basically the center of the frame. Uh, and you can see her attendants starting to circle her. She's at toward the bottom of the frame there. You can see her. Um, and she's about to go through the little side hole to the other side. I'll just kind of gently rotate the frame around. And hopefully you'll spot her on the back side back here. And there she is. You can, again, you can easily identify her. I usually don't mark my queens. Um, again, because they could reject her if you mark her. And let's see if I can catch her on this frame. A little hard to see. Um, yeah, as you can see, her thorax um, is usually is, is uh, shiny because uh, there's no hairs on it. Um, no discernible hairs, that is. And then you can see her long abdomen. Uh, so, you, again, you see her right in the center of the frame right there. And you can see her queen attendants surrounding her um, so now I know that she's positively in here um, I'm going to um, simply put her back in the box now to be safe and then from there because I small, saw the small high beetles I'm going to put uh, a beetle blaster trap in there with mineral oil um, to hopefully trap the beetles so that's all there is to it for doing a day six Hive inspection after you install packages. Again, this is not a necessary inspection if they release the queen on day three. Uh, by the day three inspection, in this case, in my case, they did not. So I had to do the day six inspection. So again, I'm going to close this up and feed them plenty of sugar syrup. Um, and then once the colony gets strong, I'll remove the entrance reducer. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Hope you learned something.